So my name is Bob Miglarini. Um, I am an intellectual property attorney with Exxon Mobil Corporation. Um, so with regard to um, my uh, practice, I deal with uh, patent preparation, patent prosecution, all aspects relating to patents, and also all aspects relating to what we call intellectual property agreements and licenses. Um, so we interact uh, quite heavily with a lot of uh, parties outside of ExxonMobil, uh, and therefore we um, put in place uh, a host of various types of intellectual property uh, agreements when uh, working with outside parties on um, technical and business projects. Um, I've been working with ExxonMobil for about 32 years now, um, and about half of my career was spent working in technology for ExxonMobil Chemical Company, uh, where I worked on technology relating to uh, polyolefin films. Um, and uh, am, 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 I am also an inventor on about 14 US patents uh, relating to thermoplastic films. Um, the last um, 16 years of my career have been spent in the legal department at ExxonMobil, and um, now I support uh, all of our um, various technical and business teams within ExxonMobil Research and Engineering Company with regard to uh, various projects relating to technology. So in terms of the uh, course um, that I will be teaching, which is Intellectual Property Agreement Fundamentals for Scientists and Engineers, um, this is uh, intended for technical and business people who uh, have a need to uh, interface with uh, individuals uh, and entities outside of their own organization. Um, in terms of the interfaces that could involve uh, sensitive technical and business information, uh, and in particular relating to technology development and business development, um, where there could be some sensitivity with regard to the protection of the information being uh, given to the other entity and people at the other entity, and how to properly protect that information. So if you are planning on communicating or collaborating with individuals outside of your organization on any type of technical matters or technical development or business development aspects, um, it's important that you properly protect uh, your company's technology and intellectual property interest by making sure that an appropriate type of intellectual property agreement is put in place with the other organization prior to beginning communications or collaborations. The last thing you wanna be is caught off guard in terms of having your uh, legal rights and your intellectual property rights compromised um, when working with another entity uh, or with people who work at another entity um, by not having in place the appropriate intellectual property agreement uh, before initiating the uh, interaction with the um, other entity. So in terms of this four-part uh, workshop, it's intended as uh, an introductory primer to the use of intellectual property agreements by engineers, scientists, and managers who are intimately involved in business and technology, and, and in particular may interface with um, individuals and organizations outside uh, of their own company in, in uh, trying to develop technology and business uh, aspects. So the focus of the course is to introduce the participants to the fundamentals of contracts with a focus on those types of contracts relating to intellectual property uh, as it relates to confidential and proprietary information trade secret information, uh, possible inventions, and even patent applications. Um, so the course introduces uh, the uh, participants to uh, the various uh, sections of a contract um, in terms of the importance of the various sections of a contract with the focus being on intellectual property related types of agreements. 
Um, during the course of the four workshops, we will cover a whole host of different types of intellectual property agreements with an emphasis on which type of agreement should be used um, based upon the particular circumstance uh, with the other entity that you want to communicate and work with. So during the course of the four workshops, we will cover uh, an overview of uh, confidentiality and non-disclosure agreements, material transfer and testing agreements, collaborative research and development agreements, um, technical services agreements, uh, consulting agreements, as well as patent and trade secret licensing types of agreements. Uh, so for each of these different types of agreements, you will learn the various business scenario where each type of agreement would be, uh, should be utilized. Um, and we'll also cover some of the important aspects with regard to the provisions in the agreement and things to look for when um, negotiating uh, each of the different types of agreements with an outside party. Um, the course will also cover how to extract further value from the intellectual property assets that you may own uh, in that it will cover creative types of technology licensing efforts um, that could be used with uh, other entities to gain further value from the intellectual property assets that you own, in particular in terms of trade secret assets and patent assets. So the course, uh, again, will cover uh, some of the important uh, agreement provisions, as well as some of the important negotiation issues involved with each of these different types of intellectual property agreements. Um, then once the agreement is put in place with the other entity or party, uh, participants will also uh, uh, get a key understanding of how to effectively work with the other party uh, to have a, a very um, strong performance in terms of performance under the agreement uh, in avoiding any other disputes with the party during the course of performance of the agreement to maximize the interaction and the value obtained when working with another entity or party with regard to uh, technology and business development efforts. Um, lastly, you'll get, gain an understanding of how to work effectively with an intellectual property attorney uh, that may represent you during your negotiations uh, with the other party in putting together a high quality intellectual property agreement that is suited towards the particular uh, needs of um, the transaction that you're gonna uh, put in place uh, or wanna put in place with the other party. With regard to the overview of the uh, information that you need, no prior knowledge of intellectual property or contracts is required. Uh, this course is intended as an, as an introductory primer as it relates to intellectual property agreements. So the, the course is structured um, as a workshop um, in terms of four weeks, uh, with each week being a one hour session. So during uh, week one, uh, we'll start with some introductory um, things regarding the, an overview of contract and agreement principles and what you need to do to have an enforceable and valid contract. Then we'll dissect uh, a typical agreement in terms of looking at its uh, major sections and what each of the major sections is intended to accomplish. So we'll do an anatomy of an intellectual property agreement. And uh, then we'll go through in some detail one of the most prevalent types of intellectual property agreements that's used in technology and business, and that is referred to as a confidentiality or non-disclosure agreement. So we'll go through an overview of uh, this type of an agreement and how it should be used. We'll discuss some of the, the, the most important provisions in this uh, agreement and the importance of those prov provisions as it relates to negotiation type of issues that you may have in putting this agreement in place with another party. At the end of week one, we will also have some uh, hypothetical practice exercises for you to to uh, do uh, between weeks one and week two to help reinforce uh, some of the principles that we're gonna discuss during week one. And we will discuss 
those, uh, the solutions to those hypothetical problems uh, at the beginning of, of week two. So that, um, that during the beginning of week two, we'll have uh, an interactive type of workshop shop session to review the hypothetical exercises. During the second week, uh, we will build upon the principles that uh, I went through during week one uh, in that we will talk about another important type of IP agreement known as a material transfer and testing agreement, which gets used for when uh, an entity wants to, um, to uh, give uh, some type of experimental product or experimental sample um, that is non-commercial to another entity for testing uh, purposes. So we'll uh, go, go through an overview of this type of an agreement and how it should be used uh, in various business settings. We'll, uh, uh, we'll do a review of the most important provisions in this type of an agreement and how those provisions uh, should be uh, negotiated with the other party. In week two, we'll also um, cover what's known as a collaborative research agreement, which gets used when um, an organization wants to engage in, um, in research and development activities using the help of another type of organization, uh, where the efforts of the other organization may be needed to develop new products and new technology. So similarly, what we've done with the other types of agreements, we'll go through an overview of the use of this type of an agreement, We'll gain an understanding of the most important provisions that should be included within it. Um, and lastly, some of the uh, key negotiation issues that come into play when trying to negotiate this type of an agreement with, uh, with another entity. And then lastly, in week two, we will uh, talk about uh, a third type of uh, intellectual property agreement known as a joint development agreement. Um, where two parties are working together to jointly develop some type of uh, new product or enter into some type of new business venture together. Uh, similarly, with the other, uh, with the material transfer and collaborative research agreements, we will give an overview of, uh, of this type of an agreement and how it should be used in various business and technical settings. We'll talk about some of the most important provisions in joint development agreements. And lastly, some of the important negotiations that come into play when trying to put in place a joint development agreement with another party. At the end of week two, we'll also have some more hypothetical uh, practice exercises uh, for the participants to uh, work on between weeks two and weeks three. And then at the beginning of week three, at the uh, beginning of it, we will uh, have a, uh, some uh, open interaction with regard to the solutions uh, or possible solutions to those hypothetical, uh, hypothetical exercises dealing with uh, what we covered during week two relating to material transfer, collaborative research and joint development agreements. During week three, we'll segue into talking about three other types of intellectual property agreements. One being uh, technical services agreements, where we need the services uh, and technical expertise of another company uh, to assist us in, in doing some development. Uh, so in technical services, the other entity may have to provide testing services uh, or evaluation services. Uh, and before having the other entity uh, um, perform these types of services, it's important to put in place an appropriate technical services type of an agreement. So we'll overview this type of an agreement, how it should be used, some of the key provisions, and some of the important negotiation issues. Then we'll segue into uh, consulting agreements. So oftentimes uh, organizations uh, hire outside consultants uh, who have expertise in a particular area that the organization doesn't have internally. And so uh, consulting agreements are also pretty prevalent. Uh, we'll overview the use of consulting agreements and some of the uh, important provisions uh, that you need to consider when putting in place a consulting agreement with a consultant and some of the important negotiation issues. 
And then lastly, on week three, we'll talk about licensing agreements in terms of ways that uh, a company can try to gain further value and monetize some of their intellectual property assets by licensing it to other parties who may want to pay for the use of these intellectual property assets, namely um, pat, um, main, mainly trade secrets and patent assets. So we'll go, go through an overview of the various types of uh, licensing agreements uh, and how they should be used. Some of the most important provisions in those, including uh, grant provisions and royalty provisions um, and some of the important negotiation issues. And then we'll finish up with week three with again, some hypothetical uh, practice exercises that the participants can uh, can work on between weeks three and weeks four. And then at the beginning of week four, um, we will discuss uh, in an open forum, the uh, practice exercises um, that uh, were introduced at the end of week three. Then lastly, in week four, we'll talk about some of the best practices uh, that parties should consider when performing under the agreement. In order, try, in order to try to maximize the overall effectiveness of the project uh, that falls under the agreement. How can the two parties, uh, a good agreement is, a, is an agreement where both parties uh, are happy with and can get the maximum effectiveness possible while working under the agreement. So we'll talk about the importance of both parties meeting their agreement obligations and how to avoid disputes with the other parties and how to properly protect IP rights when working with another party. Uh, so by not only drafting a well, uh, a well, um, a well drafted agreement, but also what to do to uh, to safeguard IP rights during the performance of the agreement. And then lastly, we'll talk about uh, how to properly terminate or extend agreements and uh, what to do. Uh, post expiration or termination in terms of some of the important things uh, that need to be considered after the agreement ends in terms of uh, to protect the interests of both parties after expiration or termination of the agreement. And then the last thing we'll handle in week four is uh, some best practices for how to work with IP attorneys that may represent you during the drafting and negotiation of an agreement with another entity. So overall, uh, this uh, workshop will present um, a, an outstanding overview of some of the key principles of IP agreements um, and, uh, and is an introductory primer that would be extremely useful for anyone working in technology and business who has a need to interface with uh, outside entities and outside organizations on, on projects. You know, so, you know, in conclusion, the intellectual property um, agreements fundamentals workshop um, would be uh, of great value to anyone who is working in technology um, and in uh, business that um, needs a better understanding of how to properly interface and communicate and more importantly, um, um, uh, put in place uh, agreements uh, with other entities and other individuals outside of their organizations uh, to uh, best protect uh, the interest uh, of the organization that you're working for. And so it would be uh, extremely valuable uh, to anyone in this type of um, future situation or current situation. So um, the, um, we look forward to um, you registering for the IP ag agreement fundamentals uh, for scientists, engineers, and managers workshop. Um, if there are any questions I can answer uh, relating to the uh, content of the workshop, uh, please feel free to contact me and uh, we look forward to seeing you um, the first week of February.